Hey, I'm Jason Chapman, and I run a music store with my brothers, John and Jeremy. People are always asking, what is it like to be in a family business? Well, I've been in a band with my family for the last 28 years. And if that wasn't enough, we recently opened a music shop. Since opening the shop, we found that the people that come through the door are just about as unique as the instruments they carry. And now, since they gave us a TV show, we leave the cameras running, and there's always something going on at the shop. Welcome back to another episode of the Ozark Music Shop. We are back. It's Sunday, or it's Tuesday, or whatever day you're this week watching we're gonna it. we do something different. We've what got a musical guest on the show today. <laughs> what? We're going to perform that music so, and do an interview. I don't so think different. you're mixing things up I a little bit. I don't think you <laughs> took this by me. I don't I'm know just going to mix it up a little and see how the audience reacts. I <laughs> I'm but not prepared. A great way to launch it is well as one of our all-time heroes, yes. and in, music, in bluegrass music in general, one of the most influential guys the Ooh. business has known. Doyle Lawson and I Quicksilver. I, I approve. Yeah, see, I knew you would go. I'll, I'm on board it. now. <laughs> Absolutely. This is actually, like Jeremy said, one of the most influential people. Uh, we talked about Jimmy Martin. We talked about the Country Gentleman. I we think, talked about I think lots of people. I think you really have to work to find a band in bluegrass now or in the past 50 years that hasn't been influenced by Doyle. I enjoyed it. I think you're going to enjoy it. I think you're going to enjoy it. I think this is a good format we're going with here. <laughs> we might stick with this. We might stick with it. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoy Doyle Lawson and Quicksilver. another episode of the Ozark Music Shop. We're here with the legendary, and we've said that a few times, like jokingly, but this time it actually is the legendary. <laughs> legendary. That's right. Doyle Lawson. That's right. Doyle, thank you so much for Make sure you say living legend. Living right. legend. Well, I think they can get that out of the video. I, like, I, I, like, they can figure that out. I like the sound of that better. Yeah. <laughs> there would be some good technology if we had this interview otherwise. Yes, right. <laughs> now, we're, we're so proud to have you here at our mobile Silver Dollar City Ozark Music Shop. Oh, it's quite a, yeah, it's quite a this, uh, you know, like Jeremy said, 
uh, legendary status. This guy has been part of the bluegrass world um, and a, a forefront to the bluegrass world. We were talking about this. Uh, you were with Jimmy Martin uh, yep. back in the a banjo player. And I don't know how many people know Doyle was a banjo player. <laughs> I was. <laughs> and, no, he still is. I heard him play fiddle. Uh, I knew that you played fiddle too. I used um, to. <laughs> <laughs> He's done it all. He's kind of settled in on the mandolin yeah. a little bit, but yeah. those other ones are still there. <laughs> well, you They're know, uh, in the early days, I played whatever it took to keep a job. You know? I, I hear you. But uh, uh, then I got to where I could afford to hire people that could actually play. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I did break in the profession as a banjo player, mm-hmm. but, uh, but the mandolin was always first and foremost my first love. Really? And Oh, yeah. I, I, I started learning to play when I was about 11 years old, and... and uh, uh, I had the good fortune to meet Jimmy uh, Martin when I was 14, and he uh, kind of took me under his wing and gave me some pointers about uh, the techniques of your right hand, especially playing the mandolin. And oddly enough, four years later, I wound up going to Nashville and working for him. Huh. And, and But as a banjo player. I was going to say, he gave me all the tips, tips as a mandolin yeah, player. And said, all that work I put into it was for nothing. You know? I'm sure he had a few banjo tips as well. Uh, he did. Oh, yeah. He had a definite idea about how he wanted to play. And, of course, you know, J.D. Uh, Crow. That's right. Uh, basically set the standard of the style of banjo in Jimmy's mm-hmm. music. And uh, and Jimmy had a lot of great banjo players after that, you know. But uh, Crow was the, kind of the one that you kind of, that was sort of the measuring stick. It was a certain thing that he heard that he liked. And I worked very hard on that, you know. But, uh, but uh, you know, uh, I uh, as I said in the early days, well, you know, whatever you, uh, I wound up after I left Jimmy in the fall of 63, uh, uh, I, w- I went to Louisville, Kentucky, for whatever reason other than I didn't want to work in a furniture factory in East Tennessee, you know. That's why and, a lot of people uh, live there, I think. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, yeah, but uh, I was about the only place you could work, you know, and I didn't want to do that. And So Louisville being a big city, I figured it. And I wound up doing uh, uh, local union jobs musically around Louisville and, and square dances and mm-hmm. things like that. And uh, then I hooked on with J.D. in uh, in 66. Yeah. I hired him uh, actually to fill in for his guitar player. It went on, and the guitar player came back, and and then we I just kept going, picking. And one day I, I said, J.D., uh, you know, Ed's back, and am I in the band, and you want me to move <laughs> on? What is he said, well, I thought you knew. You know, that's the way I got hired. You know? <laughs> Welcome. I, I Welcome. That, that fill-in position lasted about oh, a little over five years, about almost five and a half years. That was the band, uh, the Kentucky Mountain Boys, right? Yeah, it was. Yep. Yeah, sure that, was, that was pre-New South. That's right? right, and it was incredible yeah. stuff. Well, we had some good times doing oh, it, I you bet. know. And, and uh, but shortly after I left uh, in the, in the August, at the end of August in '71, uh, he he because he was looking to go a little different direction than. And uh, so the, the new South sounded good, and it, well, hey, the rest the rest is history, yes. you know. And then from there, was it the country gentleman after that? Yeah, yeah I went to the gentleman in uh, at the end of August of '71, and uh, stayed there uh, through March of '79, and uh, April the first. I was taking a risk. But, <laughs> <laughs> one of my all-time uh, favorite albums, actually, was on your the live in uh, Japan album. Yeah, I, I, I yeah. still listen to that album daily. I grew up almost, to that. I love that. album. Well, you know, we uh, we went uh, and we knew that we were going to do a live album while we were in Japan. What we didn't know that our first concert in Tokyo was the live album in Japan. <laughs> So we came off stage, and, and uh, uh, Dick Freeland on Rebel Records at the time, and we all came off. Of course, the, the, you know, the Japanese audience were just, they were just wonderful, yeah. and very responsive. And, you could hear it in the and, album. Uh, oh, yeah. And they, were, they, they just were going nuts. And, and, uh, and uh, Dick said, well, congratulations. I, I thought it meant the show. I said, yeah, yeah. I said, well, what? He said, you just cut a live album. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way to do it. Don't let know what's happening. I said, why didn't you tell us? He said, if I'd have told you guys, you'd have been way too tight. Yeah. <laughs> and he was right. Yeah. Looking at hindsight, looking back, he was right, you know. But, it, you know, I listened to it, and, and uh, uh, it, it turned out fairly well. Oh, yeah, it did. Three, two, one. This all started with a passion. Uh, 
music has been a part of our lives for as long as I can remember. Our goal from the start was to have an outlet where we could feel that passion in others. At the Acoustic Shop, this is not just what we do, it's who we are. Well, it, uh, <clears throat> the, the, I, I began the band on April 1st of 79, uh, and I had chosen the name Foxfire first, uh, based on a series of books mm -hmm. in, in North Georgia. And of course, I, I, I grew up in, in, the, in the East Tennessee, deep in the mountains, and on a little mountain farm uh, from the age of 10 until I left home. And and I could relate to uh, to a lot of that stuff. My dad grew up in a in a log house down in a in a holler that you, you, a GPS couldn't find it. If you, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, but uh, uh, so I I did relate. I thought you know that'd be a good name. So this was before we had the internet, and I mean there are no secrets anymore. You know, <laughs> back then you had to do research, and I was looking. Trying to find if any, if there were any bands out using that, and so using all the available information I could have, I didn't really see any until the word got out that I had put a band together, and it was Foxfire. And then I started getting letters and calls, <laughs> and, and they found uh, you. So they found me, and and this uh, this lady, and it, of course it didn't go on a long time. I only did a couple of shows or so with using that name. And last, the lady called, I wanted, and she said, she was virtually in tears. She said, we've been using that name for six years or what it was. I said, ma'am, listen, the last thing I would want to happen is to be mistaken for somebody else. So you, you use your name, I'll sure. find another one. So I was home visiting my parents and who had since moved back to Kingsport, Tennessee, where I was born. And my mother and I would always sit down at the table and drink coffee and I could share with her uh, any any problems I might be having, or you know, just needed. Some, I could always talk with my mother, and and I said, uh, I said, Mama, I need a name that would be different but easily remembered. And I said, I don't want a review. I don't want a mountain boy. I don't want a play playboy or a river uh, or a gentleman. I want something different. And so we started talking and throwing names back and forth, and and. Uh, she said, you know, Quicksilver's a good name. She said, you know, a, a common definition that you know, we know it as, uh, it's unstoppable and it's a force to be reckoned with. And of course, you know, we know it's a combination of tin and mercury and they used it a lot in, in, uh, for different things. Well, what, when she said that, that kind of struck a chord. I said, wow, I you know, I said, I, I, said, I really do hope that I'd, I'd like to be a force to be reckoned with. and." Uh, and unstoppable. What I'd like to do is carve me out a little place in this world of music for myself and what I'm trying to do. And so I was living uh, between Lynchburg and Appomattox, Virginia at that time. And so it was about a three and a half hour drive back. And so I rolled it around all the way home. And when, when I finally got, the, got home, it, it sounded right. But that was that was the beginning of a whole new uh, revolution in bluegrass, you know, uh, music. It's it's changed everything. Um, you became this uh, force in creating uh, musicians and and a style of music music that was that everybody wanted to be part of. I mean, and a quality level, too, a quality I level, exactly. I, I you know I one of the things that I am so thankful for was uh, by way of you, and you'd helped us and talked about some great stuff too throughout our career too, but we got together with a lot of musicians that had been through the school of Doyle Lawson. And uh, we learned a lot. We didn't know how to do any of it very well. But we knew we what learned. we were doing wrong. Yeah, we knew what we were supposed to be doing. We just didn't do it well. well. Uh, yeah, it, it, you know, there's a certain amount of discipline that you have to have. And I don't... Uh, uh, and I get asked all the time about uh, how do you how do you keep that sound intact? And obviously, uh, when you have personnel changes, there'll be a, a there'll be a maybe at least a middle school difference, you know. Sure. But yet the style. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I, so the deal is, when they come here, I'm not going to change for them. 
if they take this job, it's up to them to adapt to what's going on. And 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 I tell them if if they're willing to take direction, uh, they it'll work good. If they mm -hmm. if they don't like taking directions, they, they'd probably be better off. Just, <laughs> just not, not a fit. Yeah. <laughs> but but I, I I do I do say that uh, the crew I got right the, the guys right now I'm just. Ecstatic. About There's it. no I'm, reason why you shouldn't. Be. Absolutely. Uh, you know, Jerry and, and Jake came on in, in uh, the first of December of 2018, and they're excited about the music and they're pumped about it. And and uh, and of course, my my right arm on the road and off the road is, is Josh Swift. He's been mm -hmm. with me going on 12 years now. You know, and he's my go-to guy in, in anything that I I need. And uh, I couldn't ask for a better support man than, than he is. And and Joe is as steady as a rock, and, mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, Stephen, uh, the whole crew, a bunch uh, of good guys. You, you, you yeah. have not, yeah, guys that are all great people, yeah, and, I, but amazing musicians, all at the top of your game. I'm and, very blessed. I'm telling well, you. Well, that's what again. That's part of that consistency. You've been on the top of this heap for a long time, and I'm, you keep well, redoing I, it, and you keep getting these. <laughs> well, I've been doing it a long time. But let me tell you, somebody said, "How long have you been playing professional?" I said, well, 56 years." When you're going to retire? Said, well, do what? Trap? <laughs> no, but, uh, you know, I'm at the point right now, though, that I, I still love it uh, as much as I ever did. And, and I like I like working. I like the travel part. I like being on the stage. I like this. Yeah. I like visiting with you guys. We don't get a chance to see each other that no. much. You know? I enjoy it all. And, and, and my philosophy is, is wear out. Don't rust out. Wear out, you know. So I don't want to sit on the couch and... and and channel surf because I don't have anything to do. I'm pretty lazy. I'm pretty good at channel surf. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there's the difference. Yeah, there's the difference. There's why, there's why I'm doing that. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, yeah, I don't know about that. But. <laughs> but I want to thank you so much for, for spending the time with us and talking about this because this is a, a supreme honor for us uh, just to get to talk to you about your career and what's going on and i know you got you some roller coasters you're waiting yeah. to get on so. oh yeah <laughs> hey i didn't get to be this old by being dumb you know that <laughs> i've heard you were a big roller coaster fan oh, i heard that was your I, thing i'll watch him from afar <laughs> <laughs> yeah tell me they say you'll go for a ride i said put me down twice for next year <laughs> Oh, well, no, again, no. thank you for coming by. It Better has been enjoy. a supreme Thank honor. you, guys. Thank you so Appreciate much. It. I enjoyed it thoroughly. Thank you, thank you all. If I let it Has it been A lifetime Since I walked out on you I've been running With my life wide open Reaching out for Whatever's inside It's been hard to admit 
got to me If you're looking for an acoustic instrument, the Acoustic Shop is the place you want to go. The Acoustic Shop, uh, we've been open about four years now and uh, have been nominated top 100 uh, dealer at NAMM Show uh, for two years now. At the Acoustic Shop, we mainly focus on acoustic music instruments and the accessories that go with them. Guitars, mandolins, banjos, basses, and accessories and the, the lessons and repairs that go along with those. Uh, something that we've been passionate about for the last uh, 28 years of our lives, playing in a family band growing up, and we opened a all-acoustic music store in uh, Missouri to help fill the needs of people that are more focused on just that niche of the genre. With us having all those years on the road, it's really helped us to find the right instrument for the right person. When somebody calls us or comes into the shop, we can actually talk to them and know exactly what kind of instrument would be the best fit for them. And I think that's just something that we bring that a lot of people can. Started out teaching lessons before we even opened the shop. So that is something that has been a passion of ours for the last 15 years. I believe we've said this is where the pros teach and I truly believe this is where the pros teach. At the Acoustic Shop, this isn't just what we do, this is who we are. So if you're wanting to learn how to play the banjo, the fiddle, the mandolin, guitar, the Acoustic Shop's the place for you. Well, I think the new music format was a hit. That was uh, uh, really cool. I, think I was okay with it. I approve with some reservations. Okay. What well. happens when we don't have Doyle Lawson on next week? I guess we go back to our Are old people chop watch? shop show that we've been doing. Chop shop show. <laughs> what? I'm just tired of stealing cars. <laughs> oh, I thought you were talking about like it's steaks stealing cars is fun. Beef. It's getting caught. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, well, thanks to our city again uh, for being a, a sponsor, the lead sponsor for this show, helps us bring it to you every week. It's been a huge help and a great company to work with. Make sure to check them out as well yes. because great festivals down there, lots of fun. Be sure to like us online, Facebook, the Ozark Music Shop, and also on YouTube, YouTube. where we have some extended interviews, some of the backstage uh, footage that doesn't make this show. I bet eventually check that out. this will have, this episode will have extended interviews. That's yeah, what I guess. We're going to throw in some There's stuff. There's a lot of good stuff there, so I'm assuming it's going to happen. <laughs> anyway, we appreciate you guys watching, and we will see you next week. Closed captioning and other considerations provided by